Shalom, everybody. Josh here, excited to be talking to you from this week's tour portion. I believe that this uh, message today is going to be powerful, short, sweet, and hopefully uh, life transforming. Um, as I was reading through this week's Torah portion, Shemini, starting in Leviticus chapter 9, I was really struck by chapter 9, verse 22. Then Aaron lifted up his hands, reading from the Tree of Life version of the Bible. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. Then he stepped down from presenting the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offerings. Okay, so this is the guy now, right? This is the one through whom God is initiating the priesthood. He and his sons and his son's sons on down the line will be the priests and the high priests to minister before the Lord, to bring the sacrifices before the Lord. And it's a powerful, beautiful, important position. It even points to Yeshua, our Messiah, who became our perfect high priest, our perfect sacrificial offering. So what is it about this verse that really struck me? Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. This is the same guy that uh, not too much earlier had given into uh, the people's demands for an idol. And he had crafted a golden calf and they worshiped it, it fell into great sin. And 3,000 people had to die because of that sin. Aaron showed no leadership. He showed no understanding of God's character, no trust, no patience. Uh, and yet here he is, not too much later, and God is using him uh, as the high priest of the people of Israel. And, and this transformation is, is awesome. It's wonderful. It's encouraging because it tells us that we can also go from whatever sins we've had in the past to being those who bless people through the anointing of the Lord. It reminds me of the Apostle Paul, uh, Rav Shaul, who um, was persecuting the followers of Yeshua. He was throwing them in prison. He was given his uh, okay to, to Stephen's martyrdom. Uh, this was a bad guy doing bad things to Messiah's followers. Uh, but then he became the world's greatest missionary and spent his life being persecuted himself for the name of Yeshua. You read his uh, letters to the different congregations and they're just dripping with love, uh, love for the Lord, love for the people the people that he's ministering to. They're just dripping with wisdom, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Um, and it, it, the, the transformation is phenomenal. Okay. And so from these two pictures, the picture of Aaron and the picture of Paul, uh, I'd like us to take away two things. The first is that our past sins do not disqualify us from ministry. Okay. They don't disqualify you from ministry. Uh, if Aaron can become the high priest after making an idol, if Paul can become a, a powerful missionary after throwing the Lord's people into prison, then that tells us that whatever we've done does not disqualify us from ministry. Now, the obvious corollary with that is we cannot be continuing on in those sins, okay? So what is it that helped Aaron, that allowed Aaron to go from uh, idol maker to high priest and Paul from persecutor of the brothers and sisters of Messiah into um into one who penned most of the works of the Brit Hadasha, the new, the new covenant scriptures. What happened? Okay. And the answer in both cases is they came face to face with uh, their sacrifices, right? Aaron is offering sin offerings, not just for the people, but for himself. Paul comes face to face with the resurrected Yeshua, who was the sin offering on his behalf. 
They come face to face. They interact with the sacrifices. The old is gone. The new has happened. And and see, this is what's so important about uh, understanding our union with the sacrifice of Messiah. I talked about this last week uh, in, in last week's video. It's not just that we believe that he died for us. I know what John 3.16 says, whoever believes in him should not perish, would have everlasting life. But that belief has got to go deep, right? And and we've got to interact with things like Romans 6, 5 and, and, and Galatians 2, 19. We've got to be united with this sacrifice to the extent that we come out changed, right? We can't just say, okay, my sins are forgiven. We keep doing the same stuff and then we're okay for ministry. We interact with that uh, that sacrifice, that Messiah did for us. We're united with it so that the old is gone. We're living in the new. And that's how Aaron became high priest because there was a sin sacrifice, not just by him for the people, but for himself as well. There was a sin sacrifice. And Paul comes face to face with Yeshua, the Messiah, he receives his forgiveness. He's transformed. You see, the sacrifice has to transform us. Uh, and, and when that happens, then we are qualified for ministry. We're qualified to lift our hands like Aaron did and bless people. We're qualified like Paul was to go out and proclaim the good news of Yeshua, the Messiah. But we dare not do it without being transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, uniting us with the sacrifice of Messiah first. Messiah, cleanse me. Messiah, heal me. Spirit, fill me. And then we speak, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, Yeshua says. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so if we start speaking before the heart's transformed, it's bad news, right? That's that's dangerous. But let's be transformed in the presence of Messiah. Let the Holy Spirit do its good and perfect work so that when we speak, we are speaking out of our transformed selves. We're speaking out of the spirit of God within us and doing genuine and powerful ministry. Let me just leave you with a quote here from uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 15. Paul writes this, Trustworthy is the saying and deserving of complete acceptance. Messiah Yeshua came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. And then in verse 16, yet for this reason, I was shown mercy so that in me as the foremost, in, in other words, in me as the greatest of sinners, Messiah Yeshua might demonstrate his complete patience as an example for those who are uh, about to put their trust in him for eternal life. Uh, so that old stuff, right, doesn't disqualify us from ministry. In fact, it becomes part of our testimony. Look what Messiah saved me from. Look how patient Yeshua was with me. Look at the grace of God upon my life. I am not disqualified. I've interacted with the sacrifice of Yeshua on my behalf. I have been transformed in, his, in the presence of uh, Yeshua as my sin offering. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. And I will minister. I will bless. And I will speak of his great name. May the Lord deeply bless you. Shalom.